All right. Hello. This is the uh, Algebra One video for Monday, April the 13th. So uh, just a few more weeks here, guys. I hope you're doing well. I'm going to go over one of the problems from Thursday's assignment. There were, uh, there were some questions about it. Several of you uh, uh, didn't, didn't get it right. Let's put it that way. Uh, I'm, I don't mind wrong answers, uh, not at all. What bothered me is that there were several of you that, uh, you, I mean, even try, okay? So uh, we're gonna dig in, we're gonna do this right, be a problem solver. It's a real life situation, it's the kind of math that you'll encounter in the real world. And so uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a few more like it today. So this was the, uh, uh, the, the problem that involved Ralph's rentals. Uh, we know that Ralph rents bikes and scooters, and we know how much he charges for each of those. Uh, we know how much money he took in for the weekend, and we knew uh, how many. Let's see how many bikes. We, we've got a we've got a, uh, a number of of bikes that uh, uh, piece of information that's going to help us solve that. So um, let's let's think of the problem this way. Okay, so our equation, this is a two-variable equation, so what, basically what we're doing is we're taking the math we were doing on Wednesday's assignment, which was just working with two variables, and but now we're translating into a real-life event. So we know that the, uh, the number of bikes rented times uh, the cost per bike plus the number of scooters rented times cost per scooter will end up being our total, okay? Um, I've been out of the classroom long enough, my handwriting is starting to devolve. Let me turn the camera a little bit and see if that, that's probably even worse. All right, so we've got the number of bikes rented times the cost per bike. We take that number and we add it to the number of scooters rented times the cost per scooter, and that's gonna give us our total, all right? Let's, let's replace these things, you know, these are the, the, the things we have to find out, uh, and then let's create an algebraic equation from this. So what do we know? Uh, we know how much each bike costs. So the cost per bike is now $20, and we know that the scooter costs 45 So the cost per scooter is... 45, okay? Um, do we know how many uh, scooters were rented? No, we don't. So I'm gonna replace number of scooters rented with the letter S, okay? And the number of bikes rented, I'm gonna replace with a B. Okay? So, and we know that our total uh, was $2,125. Okay, so let me write that a little more algebraically here, okay? Uh, I'm going to take 20 times B, or $20 times B, plus $40, $45, sorry, times S equals... Two one two five. There's my algebraic equation. Okay, twenty dollars times the number of bikes rented plus forty five dollars times the number of scooters rented equals two thousand one hundred twenty five dollars. All right. So I need to figure out how many scooters. I'm really trying to find out this number s. I'm going to rewrite that as a prettier s, so everyone knows that it's an s and not a five. Okay. So I don't, know, I don't know what S is, right? That's what I'm being told to find out. Well, let's see if they've given me some information that links um, 
the two variables. Okay, I've got two variables, an S, that's number of scooters rented, B, number of bikes rented, and any time that I'm confronted with a two-variable question, I want to I want to translate it in such a way that I only have one variable in my equation. Now, we notice that in, <clears throat> in the question it says last weekend, Ralph rented 12 more bikes than scooters, okay? Now this is, this is the key to solving it, right? And this is how you're gonna figure it out. How many bikes? Well, we don't know the exact number, but we know that it was 12 more than the scooters. In other words, let me go ahead and erase this information up at the top. In other words, we don't know how many bikes were rented, but we know that the number of bikes is 12 more than scooters. In other words, bikes equals scooters plus 12, okay? Bikes equal scooters plus 12. That means there were 12 more bikes than scooters. Now, that's key to being able to solve algebraic equations. Take a little piece of information like that and change that into an algebraic expression. It's not hard to do, but you can to train yourself to look for it, okay? How many bikes? We don't know how many bikes, but there were 12 more than scooters. And all of a sudden, I can eliminate the B from my, from my equation because I can now express B in terms of S. I can say anywhere that B appears down in here in my equation, I can replace B with S plus 12 because B and S plus 12 are the exact same thing. So let's rewrite this equation. Okay, $20 times B is now going to be $20. times S plus 12 plus $45 times S equals 2125, okay? So now I don't have a two variable question. I've got a one variable question. So I've got 20 times S plus 12. I have to distribute. In other words, I have to, I have to multiply the number on the outside of the parentheses times every term on the inside of the parentheses. And what is a term? Well, it's a number, a letter, or a number-letter com combination that is separated by a plus or minus inside the parentheses, outside the parentheses. If we're talking about terms, this is S plus 12. There are two terms inside the parentheses, and they're separated by a plus or minus. So I have to multiply 20 times S. I have to multiply 20 times 12. Okay, 20 times S is 20S. Uh, 20 times 12 is, uh, well, I know that, that 20 times 10 is 200, and that 20 times 2 is 40, so I put those together, it becomes $240. Plus, $45 times S equals 2125. All right, here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to combine my like terms. Here's a term, 45s. Here's a term, 20s. They're both numbers multiplied by s. And what, what the laws of algebra tell me is if I have any number multiplied by a variable and another number multiplied by the same variable, I can just add those two together since they're both positive. Okay, so 20 plus 45s gives me 65s plus 240 equals 2125. Then I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to divide, I'm sorry, I'm going to subtract. I want to get S all by itself because that's what I was told to find for my problem, how many scooters. So I'm going to subtract um, 2,125 uh, minus 240. Um, let me do that in my head really quickly. Um, Well, that's not very quickly either, is it? I get 1885. I hope I'm doing that right. Uh, let me go backwards. It would be super embarrassing if I got this math problem wrong. Um, so to check my math, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 240 to 1825, and it should end up being 2125. I'm just trying to figure that out, make sure I've, I'm not doing this wrong. Uh, so for the 12, uh, the one up there, um, 2, 10, 
and one eleven. Yep, that's right. Okay, I got that that right. So now that tells me that sixty five s equals eighteen eighty five. Now I tell you, as as cool a flex as it would be for me to divide eighteen eighty five by sixty five in my head, uh, not going to be able to do that. So um, I actually did this problem on a sheet of paper. Um, and that number is uh, 29. Okay. So that's how many scooters I rented was 29. So let's go back. Uh, I didn't ask for it, but how many bikes were rented? Well, if, if, there were, if there were scooters plus 12, then bikes were 41. You had 41 bikes rented and 29 scooters. All right. So you're going to need to, to know how to do those problems uh, for today's homework. Um, there are a couple of those that kind of, they're not identical, but that's the concept behind them. You need to figure out what it is that you're trying to solve. There's one more problem uh, that I want to kind of intro. Okay, let's talk about the concept of volume. Volume, all right? Um, if we're measuring volume, that is a three-dimensional measure, and it's usually given in cubic something. So it can be cubic feet or cubic yards. Today's homework assignment asks you to give an answer in cubic feet. Let's uh, understand what a cubic foot is. Cubic foot is not a two-dimensional object. Uh, I'm not quite drawing it to scale here. Okay, but this is a cube, and if you can imagine that this is 12 inches from here to here, and this is 12 inches from here to here, and it's 12 inches from here to here. This is one foot cubed, okay? That's what a cubic foot looks like. Now, let's say that I went and I bought mulch. Today's question has to do with mulch. Uh, let's say I went and I bought mulch and I said, I need to put three inches of mulch down uh, on every square foot of ground. So you know what a square foot looks like. Just imagine a flat tile, okay, in your yard. And every square foot has to be covered with three inches. How many cubic feet is that going to take? Well, let's think about it. How many times can we divide a cubic inch into three inches per square foot? Well, if I were if I were uh, to uh, uh, to divide this, uh, I would find that twelve divided by three is four. What that tells me is that I can divide my cubic foot into four. Now imagine that that's a, a big a big cubic block of, of mulch, right? And if I were to say, uh, put that um, three inches, and I think three inches is the measurement on today's homework assignment. If it's not, then, then you'll have to do some similar math work. But uh, if, if we're saying, uh, take this, this uh, cube of mulch and then spread it around the yard so that every square foot has three inches of mulch, how many square foot could you cover with this? Well, imagine taking this off by layers. You'd have one square foot covered by this layer, another square foot covered by this layer, another square foot, another square foot, so that it ended up side by side, it would look something like this. Okay. In other words, we could take one cubic foot and we could, we could do one, two, three, four square feet covered in three inches of mulch. So you'll need that information. This is, uh, this is very real life. Uh, many years ago, there was a, a teacher by the name of Kratis Williams who taught in one-room schoolhouses in Kentucky. And um, the farmers in, that, in those days would bring in their crops and they would they would uh, uh, 
uh, put them in their uh, in their wagons, take them to town. But the the farmers were very poorly educated. They had they had almost no uh, concept of mathematics and surely couldn't do geometry or algebra. And so they would kind of have to guesstimate how much they were taking in, and uh, so the the big city uh, suppliers were taking advantage of them because the farmers were were afraid to be ashamed and show up and not have enough. So uh, it was they were they were supposed to bring in whatever the crop was that they were bringing in. Um, they, it was it was measured in cubic square feet, and they would bring it in and they would just kind of heap it up and uh, hope that it was enough, and they were being taken massively taken advantage of. And so you have a, a school teacher um, who, uh, pretty cool, long story, I'll share it some other day, but uh, uh, God just kind of put him in a position to be able to minister to the families of very poor, very rural farmers. And so in teaching his students how to calculate uh, cubic square feet, uh, the farmers learned that that uh, they could get a more accurate measurement with the help of the students. And so the farmers started coming to the school on their way to the market, and the students would measure the cubic square feet that they had of their crop stocked in, in the back of the wagon and would give them an accurate re measurement using math very much like this, and uh, it would save the farmers a lot of money. And, and uh, in fact, it... Uh, uh, kind of illustrated how important it was for the students to get a good education. But anyhow, I'm missing everybody. Hope you're doing well. Uh, call, text if you need to help. But uh, we've only got a few more weeks of this. Let's keep it up. Do a good job. Love you guys.